we learned many online tools to help us teach our students so that uh, there should not remain any learning gap during this period now that we are going back to normal teaching pattern uh, we have to face uh, many uh, more challenges to deal with the students especially in mathematics don't think your challenges are over uh, students in your class may be familiar with the concepts uh, of or the formulas but the most important aspect of mathematics learning is practice done by students during the uh, the practice done by student under the careful and systematic watch of teachers that personal touch which they are missing is creating a huge gap in systematic learning of the subject so the biggest challenge for the mathematics teachers uh, mathematics uh, teaching learning process right now is uh, writing the answers of the problem they may be knowing the concepts as, as i told you but how to write how to express it that is the biggest problem which in turn impact the solving of question paper and help getting low score and uh, to help our students and teachers we are going to discuss the solutions of those problems which we are going to face especially with eighth class students because uh, you know they have studied their middle school mathematics online only for this webinar Uh, we prepared a question paper based on the sample question paper the questions we have selected for this particular question paper is uh, from the papers sent to us by few master trainers and we prepared it ourselves also uh, that question paper was in turn administered with the eighth class students as practice paper checked properly a presentation is prepared on the basis of their responses a lot of hard work is done by the training team to discuss all the points all the value points of this question paper um, before we begin i i, I you all already are muted because uh, Uh, we have kept you muted so that uh, because the number of participants are more than 200 as i told you before also you will not be able to unmute yourself and uh, we are going to discuss the paper prepared by us after the webinar you do write your queries in case you have any query in the chat box after the webinar we'll take one by one okay uh mrs uh, rashmi kathuria madam uh, pgt uh, kulachi hansraj model school and she is in charge of middle school uh, uh, middle classes and uh, she has done a lot of hard work to prepare this webinar each and every question was discussed properly and uh, properly and administered to the uh, students and there on the basis of their response she has prepared this ppt not taking much of your time i welcome rashmi kathuria and uh, i ask her to start with the design of the paper and take all the value points here rashmi over to you thank you so much rajni ma'am greetings to everyone you know that uh, this webinar has been planned at the time when we will be having our class 8 dav board exam and now that schools are open so all the children have to come to school for writing the exam so we know that as a teacher the greatest challenge is writing of mathematics so i will not take much of time in going into deeper nitty gritties of what challenges we faced in an online environment 
we our focus for today is chris on dav class 8 math exam so you all know that you must have seen uh, the sample papers also which were provided by dav cae i have written here four crucial challenges which we all have observed and which we are hearing from lots of teachers all around especially in mathematics that children they find difficulty in expressing mathematics when it comes to writing of a process we all know that when we learn mathematics there are three important aspects first one is the vocabulary which children use when they are solving a question because without the understanding of the vocabulary we cannot learn the process second is process so process meaning what we write when a question comes now the third thing is application so we all these three when we combine together it reaches to the important aspect of mathematics that is writing of maths on a paper another thing which we have noticed in especially in class 8 you can all imagine that the children who are appearing now for class 8 mathematics they are the children who were in grade 6 when this pandemic started so you can remember that these children were in grade 6 and till grade 6 many of the math concepts which they are using right now they are not even talked about in the syllabus like you have seen the construction skills in grade 8 specifically we have introduction to the graphs and whatever new concept which the children have studied for the first time in grade 7 and 8 that is getting affected so in today's webinar we will be taking up certain important points so whatever time has left we will reach to our students and we will try to tell them about the important parts of writing maths paper in class 8 so now you, we know that first of all we have to understand the duration maximum marks and how the paper will look like how many questions are there and in in how many questions do we get the internal choices so we know that the entire class 8 maths paper contains two parts that is part a and part b and in both the parts the students will be getting the internal choices then in part a there are two specific sections section 1 containing 16 questions of one mark each and this is a very short answer type questions and you know that uh, in these 16 questions out of uh, any of the 16 questions children will be getting choices in five of the questions and this is question number 1 to question number 16 of the paper then there is section 2 which is new to the students because uh, they will be getting the case study based questions for the first time and there will be four case studies each case study will be followed by five questions and out of five the children have to do any four so question number 17 to question number 20 will be case study based questions then there will be part b and in part b we have three sections section 3 section 4 and section 5 students are actually familiar with these kinds of questions so in section 3 question number 21 to 26 so there are six two markers and in two questions of two markers students will be getting a internal choice now question number 27 to question number 23 that is a th three marker question and that means that there are seven three marker questions and ch children will be getting choices in two questions of three marks then there is section number 5 which is new to students because uh, the here the it comes the 
the importance of uh, value points. We have to emphasize each and every thing when we are writing a five marker question. So every value point carries an importance. So question number 34 to 36, that is there are three questions and these are of five marks each. And in one question, the children, the children will be getting the internal choice. So this is the overall you know, scenario of uh, how the children will be getting the uh, question paper. So every child must be first familiar with the two parts because when it comes to writing the answers in the answer sheet, they have to mention part A, section one. And when they are attempting any of the section, all the questions given in one section they can do in one go. The order can change, but the questions of one section, give them a practice, give them a habit of doing at one place. So section one, section two, they are of part A. Then section three, four and five, they are in part B. Now, on the basis of experience, like how children are writing in the examination paper, as a teacher, we can tell our students before they go for writing the examination, some of the important things. So we have listed here some of the important things. We will be sharing this presentation with you. If you wish to write down, you can write down, but we will be giving the PDF of this presentation to all of you. So the first point is when the children are coming to the school. Now earlier they were doing the exam from past two years they are appearing in the examination from home. So we have to tell them that they have to be ready with sheets. So sheets they will get from the school. Graph paper they will get from the school and if they are doing the paper online they have to be ready with that. Then geometry box and some material which they might require when they are writing the examination paper. So they should carry their own material when they are writing the paper. Now regarding the construction question, I have read one comment also in the chat box. Regarding the construction question, we have to tell to them that they will be writing what is given, what is required, then they will be making the construction using compass and ruler. And then if it is asked that write the steps of constructions, only then they have to write. Otherwise, tell them that do not write the steps of constructions if not asked. So this is a very, very important thing because every time when the children are doing this question, they ask, ma'am, should we write the steps of construction? So tell them, okay, in the question paper, if it is mentioned that write the steps of construction, only then write the steps. Otherwise, it is not desirable. You can, you will be wasting your time if you are writing the steps. Now coming to the third important point that is regarding the questions which are based on the graph. Now the children have practiced this skill online. And they will be writing and doing this uh, in the paper, in the answer sheet. So we have to tell them, okay, you have to learn the, normally they say the horizontal line is the x-axis, vertical line is the y-axis. And in their mind, if the, there is a conflict between horizontal and vertical, and they have not seen what the teacher has been doing when the online classes were on, so they might represent them in a wrong way. So give them ample practice of labeling the axis, the x-axis and the y-axis uh, in the uh, graph paper. And then when it comes to plotting the line graph, normally, you know, in class eight, when it comes to drawing the graph, after observing the data, the children, they start uh, drawing the bar graph right or they start making different types of graph but in the class eight they have studied about drawing of the line graphs so give them practice of 
these kinds of questions because uh, it has been observed that when they are drawing the line graph, they are plotting the points, they're not writing the ordered pairs, they're not mentioning the correct scale or whether they have understood the meaning of scale or not. So regarding the question of graphs, it seems to be very easy, but the children, they require ample practice. Now coming to the fourth point, that is questions related to geometry. So in uh, whenever there is a question on geometry, so when the statement is given, the children, they draw the figure. In some of the questions, figure is given. So they have to draw the figure, label it proper, properly. For example, they are using the numbers like 1, 2 and 3 for representing any angle. And they have drawn the figure in the rough paper or in the question paper. And they have not drawn the figure in the answer sheet. So we have to tell them in advance that when you are attempting any question which is based on geometry and you are assuming angles like angle one, two, you are labeling it in a different way. So do make the figure and label it properly. Then they have to acquire the habit of writing what is given, what is to find or to prove, and then writing the solution or the proof depending on the question and especially in case of geometry because uh, in geometry a lot of reasoning is asked like in geometry if you see the chapter parallel lines so when they study this chapter the parallel lines and the transversal so th the question which is based on parallel lines and transversal can be solved in different ways. Sometimes children, they use the concept of corresponding angles. Sometimes they use alternate angles and sometimes they use interior angles on the same side of transversal. It depends on which particular property they are using for proving the lines to be parallel or solving a particular question. So they should be given ample practice on writing the reasoning of each and every thing which they are using for solving a particular geometry question. Now coming to four important tips, like uh, it's purely on writing part. Now, if you have uh, actually seen the sample paper and uh, you have done a little bit of calculation on uh, number of questions, you will be surprised to see that children have to uh, do 16 questions of one marker and uh, that is from section one and uh, five questions they are in the choice so that means they have to actually read 21 questions in uh, case study based question there are four questions each question is having five parts so in all we have 20 questions and out of 20 they have to attempt 16 so 20 more questions are there then you have two markers, so there are six two markers and two choice, internal choice two markers are there. So they have to read eight questions. Similarly, when you see the statistics of three markers, so there are seven three markers and uh, two questions are given in internal choice. So that means they have to read nine questions. Then uh, three, five markers are there and one internal choice is there. So that means there are four questions. You just add on these numbers, 21, 28, nine and four, you get 62. So they have to read so much and they have to write in the stipulated time. So we have to train the young ones on attempting the question and writing whatever is necessary. Because if they write extra, then we, they are not getting extra marks, but they will be wasting their time. So let us see what is desirable, what is important, and that practice we are going to give to them. Now coming to one mark questions, write small steps. Tell them write small steps. You can skip steps. Final answer is important in a one, one marker. Okay, so now in a one marker, maximum half half two value points can be there half mark each so they have to understand that it is not mcq it is a very short answer question so that can contain two steps 
So each small step can be of half mark. So one mark for a one mark question, they don't have to write explanations. They don't have to write the reasoning. They have to focus on the process and the final answer. Right now coming to the two mark questions for a two mark question. Reasoning is important. So they, they must write the reason and you will observe that sometimes there are three important points. So one point can get a weightage of one mark and then half off. So you get a total of two. Sometimes there are two important steps. So each important step can be given one mark each. So it depends on the type of question which has been asked as a two marker. So the children are to be given practice on doing this analysis on their own that it is a one marker how it is to be answered and if it is a two mark question how it is to be answered now i have already shared with you the third point and the third point talk talks about that do all the questions given in one section at one place so if this mind map is there in the mind of the child like there are two parts I'm repeating, there are two parts, part A and part B. In part A, there are two sections, section one, section two. So when I'm writing my answer, it is part A, section one. Do all 16 questions, then part A, section two. Do all case study questions in one go, then part B, section three. Do all two markers in one go, then part B, Section four, do all three markers in one go and do not forget to write the question number, which is very, very important. Then in section five, there are three, five markers and they have to do all these five questions, uh, three questions in one go, which is of five marks each. If you have any question or query, please write in the chat box. We will be taking up the queries later. And uh, right now we are focusing on the part of the webinar. So right till now, we have shared with you some tips for the children for the examination. Now I am coming to specific observations which are made when we have observed certain number of notebooks. Okay, so like in uh, direct and inverse variation questions, normally you will see that children, they forget to mention like if it is a direct variation or the case of inverse variation and they do the calculations and the direct and inverse variation questions they are uh, like from uh, it can be a two marker so if it is a two marker then in that case reasoning is important so they should be given reinforcement on writing whether it's a direct variation or it's a case of inverse variation this statement is important and then apply the rule as per which type of variation we are using for solving a particular question. Now, coming to the question from mensuration and algebraic expressions, in all these uh, particular chapters, you see that they are uh, all based on formulas. So formulas are very, very important. Give them a practice. If you are solving a question in which you have used an algebraic identity, write the reason on the right hand side in the bracket. Similarly, when we are solving a question which is based on mensuration, maybe the total surface area, the curved surface area, or maybe the volume, then they have to write down the formulas which they are using for solving a particular question. So I hope up to this, the tips which are shared with you will be useful for you as a teacher as a master trainer and for the students as well. Now, here, if you see, I have taken uh, one paper. <clears throat> now, in uh, sample papers also, uh, it's not mentioned like how, from how many marks are for a particular, you know, chapter. But, you know, you can make uh, the paper depending on uh, previous papers also. And here we have uh, made one paper. Uh, Rashmi, one second. Uh, I have shared this paper with all in uh, the WhatsApp group. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. So you can access the paper. And uh, in this particular paper, we have taken certain specific questions. 
and uh, using those questions as samples you, you you can you know share this presentation with the students also and uh, take up this uh, session with students also so that they can understand like if we are writing a one marker okay in that case the statement is important you don't have to do the explanation like you see this first example let us see some questions and then we'll we'll get the better insight of like what we are trying to address today like what is important for writing in a maths paper first question is it's a one marker find the perfect square numbers between 40 and 50 now you see children have done this question in their own ways and we have observed that many of the children have written 1 square is 1 2 square is 4 3 square is 9 they are writing all and then finally they are writing the answer for, there is one perfect square number between 40 and 50 that is 49 so you can very well see that if for solving a one marker if the child is writing all this do you think it is meaningful we and uh, every child can you know understand this that uh, there is one perfect square number between 40 and 50 and quickly the answer can come out like 49 so only one statement is required over here there is no need of writing all the squares over here right so this is a good example which the children can understand like what is desi desirable for writing coming to the next question very interesting difference of two perfect cubes is 189 and the cube root of the smaller of the two number is 3 find the cube root of larger number okay so for a one marker you might be thinking okay the children will be taking some time for uh, first understanding the statement yes of course this is a question where they are going to first understand the statement and then frame a mathematical equation now here do you think it is desirable to write down all these like difference of two it's already given in the question difference of two perfect cubes 189 cube root of smaller number 3 smaller number the child is calculating and then writing the larger number and then finding the cube root so for a one marker if we simply start with if b is the larger number so they can simply write down the statement 3 cube plus 189 is equal to b cube simplify this you get cube root of 216 they remember this cube root of uh, 216 directly answer can come out to be the cube root of larger number is 6 so this is another example where half mark each of a particular value point is given like if the child frames the equation 3 cube plus 189 is equal to b cube this much care is a weightage of half mark and then writing the final answer that means finding the cube root of 216 and getting the answer as 6 that carries a weightage of half mark coming to the third one interesting uh, this is a simple application you you know you have to just find 125 raised to the power 1 by 3 apply the laws of uh, exponents then minus 27 raised to the power 1 by 3 and then whole square and uh, one important observation which we can make from uh, this particular question because here you can see that there are there, there is an internal choice also so in this question you will see that internal choice is given from the same chapter so whenever even we are making question papers for our children for practice we have to have this practice where when we have to give an internal choice the two questions which you are choosing they are from the same chapter now in this particular question there is no need of writing the reason simply calculate 125 raised to the power 1 by 3 the child is writing 5 cube raised to the power 1 by 3 then minus 3 cube raised to the power 1 by 3 and then whole square simplify this up to this the child will get half mark 
and if uh, the final answer is not correct that the, the, the child will get half mark and if the final answer is correct that is 5 minus 3 whole square you get 2 square which is 4 directly the child can write answer 4 so the ch child will get the complete one mark now you see the second part here the choice question 3 raised to the power x is equal to 81 if there is one intelligent child in the class who is able to think like orally, if the child is thinking in the mind, like 3 raised to the power x is equal to 3 raised to the power 4. And you know that when bases are same, we equate powers and the child is writing the value of x directly, that is x is equal to 4, half mark will be given. Then finally, you, you will see that uh, in such kinds of questions, many of the children, they miss the second part. They think, okay, we have found the value of x. So the second part where we have to find the value of 3 raised to the power x minus 6, they leave this part. Unknowingly or knowingly, I don't know. But uh, we have to reinforce on this point that read the question carefully. Here, the value of x which you are getting after that, we have to find 3 raised to the power x minus 6. So put the value of x that is 4, you get 3 raised to the power 4 minus 6, that is 3 raised to the power minus 2, directly write the answer 1 by 9. So for a one marker, big, big explanations and big, big solving is not required. If the child is skipping some steps, it is fine. Our focus is that the process is correct and the final answer is correct. Now coming to the similar question, question number four here also uh, the two two things are tested because here you will notice that in the question it is saying if 4 upon 11 raised to the power x minus 1 is equal to 11 upon 4 raised to the power 2x minus 5 so one set of knowledge is that uh, they have to make bases on both the sides as same so the child is understanding that if 11 by 4 is to be made 4 by 11 what will happen to the sign of the exponent right so if the child is writing directly that x minus 1 is equal to minus of 2x plus 5 then half mark will be given okay and then but after solving you will see that after solving the answer comes out to be x is equal to 2 half mark is given so in these kinds of questions, the when we are understanding and solving, uh, the two important steps, the two process, the process that, that is first where we where we are getting the uh, equation, and second is the solving part. Now coming to question number five, it's a one marker. Here you know because in the class it was taught that you have to mention about direct and inverse variation. The child has made the table and written that when x and y vary inversely, then applied the rule. If one child is writing only 25 into 3 is equal to 15 into y and getting y is equal to 5, that, that, that child also will get the same marks, one marker. So in this question, already in the question, it is given that x and y vary inversely, x is 25, y is 3, we have to find the value of y when x is 15. So just by reading this statement also, we can directly write, because it's a one marker question, we can directly write 25 into 3 is equal to 15 into y, and we can get the answer y is equal to 5. Now coming to question number 6, simple calculation based question, GST is to be found and uh, simple calculation 28% of 1500 and you are getting the answer. So here also if the child is writing GST 28% of 1500 half mark is to be allotted and uh, final calculations and final answer that the answer rupee 420 uh, then complete one mark will be given if the child is getting the correct answer. Coming to the next question, question number seven, very interesting because uh, I had a discussion with children also. They found that uh, in this particular question, a lot of calculation was done. Yes, we have to tell them that sometimes a question like, if a question like this comes, you have to learn the time management thing. So uh, sometimes it happens that in a one marker, you are just using the time for writing one statement. 
and there will be some questions where you will be requiring some time maybe uh, 45 seconds or one minute for solving and then writing so here uh, present population no need of writing the formula that's why i have deliberately taken up this particular solution simply write down the calculation part because in this one marker formula has no weightage so 62500 into 1 plus 4 by 100 raised to the power 2 so we have to just write the final answer find its present population some children they like when uh, we were checking the papers some children have written total population of the town then uh, time and then formula and then doing this calculation so that means they have waste taken more time so simple thing is write down present population do the calculation part and you get the final answer coming to question number eight uh, this is from uh, the chapter algebraic identities so here uh, factorization is asked in the first part and normally children they commit mistake in these kinds of uh, questions so give them ample practice of factorization maybe by splitting the middle term or uh, uh, the, the questions where they have to take common and then again common so you can make a worksheet of uh, the questions and even in our book also in brain teasers some interesting questions are given so children can practice and uh, this concept is important because when they will be uh, studying algebra in grade 9 10 and even in 11 and 12 also so th th this particular concept is going to help them so give practice of uh, factorization thing so here interestingly you will see that uh, in the first part that is factorize uh, some of the children they try to take four common from the two terms like that is the second and the third term and they were they got stuck so it's very very important like how you are taking the common part and then getting the final answer so here half of mark is for each of this step so first step is a minus four plus take bc common from uh, the last two terms and then you take uh, a minus 4 common you get the answer as a minus 4 into 1 minus bc now coming to the choice question uh, you will see that uh, when uh, children they see question in which decimals are involved and uh, it's in their mind i don't know why they fear from doing calculations on uh, decimals so you can have a you know worksheet in which certain simple multiplications because here if you notice that in this particular question it is on a square minus b square part okay a square minus b square identity is getting used so basically they have to have a practice of questions like 0.1 m whole square minus 0.2 n whole square and you can formulate similar questions so that they can get at ease when they are doing calculations which is based on decimal now in this question many of the children have done a uh, uh, mistake when it is coming to the last part last part meaning writing the final answer that is 0.01 m square minus 0.04 n square so if any of the term is wrong so the final answer is wrong so the children are able to write the first step that is 0.1 m whole square minus 0.2 n whole square just by observing the expression and writing that okay we have we are going to use the identity a square minus b square here again if they are not writing this reason we are not going to deduct the mark so we have to see that they know which identity is to be applied and do the correct the calculation correctly. Coming to the ninth question, which talks about the degree. And you will see, you must have experienced this also when we ask uh, certain questions where, you know, a little bit of calculation is required here. First, they have to do the simplification and then find the degree. Many of the children, they have written the degree as three, uh, like uh, around 20 to 25 percent children, they answered the degree as three. So that means 
we have to give uh, practice on uh, these kinds of questions where uh, a simple concept has been asked finding the degree so first do the simplification then uh, express it in standard form and then you can observe and write the degree so here you can see that uh, if you observe the second solution and the first solution both the children have got one mark but if you see the second solution this is a i mean a child who has a good knowledge and who has a good habit of writing the reasoning also so the child has written using the identity and then simplifying and then writing the degree right so here you know that if the final answer is correct you are going to give the marks because but one more one thing which i would like to clarify over here in case in your marking scheme there is a weightage for the process like uh, i have seen quickly read the chat box if there is a weightage for the process in the for the process that here the child has to first multiply the two binomials and then get x raised to the power 6 minus 15 x cube plus 56 right so here you will see that half mark is given up to this particular point because in the marking scheme that weightage was there but if it is not there then if the child is writing the correct degree that is 6 so you, the child will get the marks now coming to the 10th question here because it was there in class 7 also if the child is written 6 is the degree of the polynomial that is 6 the answer is correct here you see uh, question number 10 that is um, uh, cross multiplication method the child has to apply and do the simplification apply the distributive law and solve here you see that one child has written the answer in decimal now we have to tell that it's a one marker and it's not that it has been asked that calculate in decimal so up to if the child is writing the answer as x is equal to minus 26 by 11 that is perfectly fine so answer in the decimal is not required now question number 11 very interesting uh, thing because uh, you have observed that uh, in parallel lines and transversal the children they solve the questions in their own way they choose uh, uh, various uh, properties for solving such type of questions now in this question a very important point i would like to discuss with you when it is a two marker or a three marker or a you know long answer type question in which geometry is involved please tell the children to draw the figure right so when they draw the figure and sometimes they take angle names of their own choice then when they are solving a question in which they are writing angle 1 is this or x is this so if the figure is not there like if you see the marking of uh, grade 9 and 10 in board every time they say when there is no figure no marks are given so let us give the habit of habit this habit to children that when you are given a uh, this uh, geometry question please draw the figure and then write down what is given what is to find and then whenever you are solving write the reason in the bracket now this is a one marker so in this one marker we have to find the value of x so if the child is writing x is 148 degrees and in the bracket corresponding angles if you see the marking scheme of this particular uh, paper uh, i will share that with you then half mark is for this corresponding angles and then final answer that is x is equal to 148 degrees now see the choice question in the choice question uh, we have to find the value of x and y so for this that means half of mark is for each of the uh, variable that is x and y so here also the same kind of uh, reasoning is to be given like x comes out to be 180 minus 150 uh, sorry 50 degrees and uh, the child can write the linear pair thing 
and uh, why the child can find in any way maybe vertically opposite angles using the 130 degree angles or maybe the using the value of the x which the child has found that is alternate angles right so here each and every reasoning for geometry question particularly is important if they are drawing the figure i told you if in a particular question they are taking angle one two or three or something tell them to draw the figure right so whether it is a one marker two marker three marker any type of question in which geometry is involved give them a habit of drawing the figure and if they are assuming one two three or x y z anywhere they will not commit any mistake okay coming to the next that is question number 12 very interesting question and you will be surprised to notice that uh, many of the children have written very elaborate answers for this particular questions read the first one first one it uh, says that uh, what is the order of rotational symmetry of regular octagon so it's a regular octagon the child can directly write the answer what will be the order now you see the answers which the children have written first one order of rotational symmetry 360 degrees divided by angle of rotation calculation is being done and answer is correct no doubt but you know that when it's a regular figure then in that case you can directly write the statement so order of rotational symmetry of a regular octagon is eight now observe the second one second one is write the angle of rotation and uh, of a rectangular figure so you can directly write the uh, uh, this uh, angle of rotation there is no need of explanation and which letter of this word shows a rotational symmetry of order 2 if the child is directly writing alphabet n the child will get the credit so half of mark is given for both of both these answers Coming to question number 13, the radius of cylinder is 7 centimeter and its height is 10 centimeter. We have to find the CSA of cylinder. Direct, direct application. If the child is not writing the first two statements, we are not going to deduct marks. If the child is directly writing CSA is equal to 2 pi RH, which is 2 into 22 by 7 into 7 into 10, simplify, you get the final answer unit is important over here sometimes it is mentioned that when the child is not mentioning the unit you are penalizing so if 440 is written and a unit is not mentioned you can deduct one half mark okay so tell them that uh, do mention the unit in the end when such questions are being asked so here for tip for such kinds of questions is that they have to write down uh, they are not uh, like required to write down what is given Rather, they can directly start from the formula, substitute the values and get the final answer because it's a one marker. So I hope uh, till now we are pretty clear about how much is desirable when we are answering a one marker. Now coming to question number 14, name the polyhedron having seven faces. When we see seven faces and it is a polyhedron, direct answer we can write down. Okay, so yes, the children can use CSA and TSA terms. The polyhedron having seven faces, 10 vertices and fifth, there is no need of writing this statement again. Direct answer, pentagonal prism or they can directly write down uh, heptahedron. So they can have a practice on like seven faces, eight faces, nine faces, or like we have the names of the polygons. So similarly, we have the names of the polyhedrons. So you, you can give them this tip like if seven faces is, is written, you directly write down heptahedron. So th this is the final answer. So here it's a time saving question. So you, you have seen that we have traveled from question number one to question 14. There were certain questions in which a little bit of calculation is required. I would rather say smart calculation steps are required. So the children are to be reinforced on these important points. Now, question number 15, three sentences are desirable. First, 
here we have to find the probability of uh, getting a vowel from the letter of the letters of the word mathematics so how many favorable outcomes are there child can write number of favorable outcomes total number of outcomes and here i would like to take your attention to a very very important point many of the children they write p p is equal to 4 by 11 tell them or give them a practice of writing name of event in the bracket we ignore it but as a maths teacher we can tell them because uh, they will be studying this in grade 10 also so probability that is p in the bracket getting a vowel is 4 by 11 if a child has directly written p of getting a vowel is 4 by 11 that child will also will also get uh, full marks because here it's not written that you have to write down uh, the number of favorable outcomes and uh, no no it's not necessary that they write the answer in decimal so here we write the probability answers like in fractions coming to question number 16 very interesting and very simple also uh, we have to find the class size if the concept is clear class size is you know what is class size upper limit minus lower limit you take any of the interval and then get the answer 0 0.25 simple calculation so half mark is for uh, this uh, or if uh, in the marking scheme it's like ul minus ll that is upper limit minus lower limit the child is getting the answer as 0 0.25 now see the choice question here we have to find the range here i would like to give give uh, one important uh, observation some children they think that they can read very easily from the numbers which are given which is the highest number and which is the lowest observation and they commit error so tell them or give them a habit if some less terms are there like here not much uh, terms are there so they can write in order in ascending order and then they can find out which is the largest number and which is the smallest number and uh, this will uh, help them in getting the correct answer like there will be lesser chances of mistakes and because we have observed that uh, many of the children have done 99 minus and in place of 40, 99 is visible okay it's the largest number but some of them have, have skipped 47 and they've taken 51 and uh, the answer is wrong and they have lost this one mark so this covers section one of uh, part a which has 16 questions i hope uh, the discussion so far is uh, fruitful quickly i would like to read from the chat if it is yes then we are going to take up the section two write in the chat box that you are finding all these tips useful and you will be sharing with the children and your colleagues wonderful good energy okay moving on to the part a section two and this is a very very beautiful section which has been added that is uh, this uh, case study based questions and here i would be sharing with you some interesting things okay we will be discussing one one or two case studies and uh, because you have the question paper with you so you can uh, access them very interesting uh, situation is given over here thank you so much for the motivation coming to question number 17 uh, case study based question and this is a question which is uh, based on reading of the pie chart so here one pie chart has been given first thing which is important is that we have to tell our children to write the answer that is question 17 part a in the bracket which out of one two three and four they are choosing i have seen hundreds of copies and in hundred almost 60 children almost 60 and it's a huge number 60 children have done the calculations found the right answer 
though this time we have not penalized them but they have no habit of writing the question number and the correct answer now you see that this is the pie chart which is given quickly see all the five uh, questions what is the percentage of indian students so you see indian student uh, the degree is given to be 180 degrees so 180 by 360 into 100 answer is simple calculation is simple answer is 50% i have taken a screenshot from the paper now you see some of the children have written 50 okay there is no choice here 50 number 1 this 50 percent number 1 number 2 please tell them to write the answer as per the question what is the meaning of this if you observe i have written here on the right hand side in the slide question 17 what is the correct answer a part first part 50% no calculation is not required in the fair part if they are doing it in the rough and they are writing the final answer they will get full marks okay so in the case study based question that is not required now b part you see this suppose th this is what i am saying that give them a practice of writing the correct choice b part correct choice is see what answer the child has written suppose there are 1000 students nationwide how many of them will be americans the child has written american students now observe the sector angle that is uh, this uh, angle is 90 degrees 90 by 360 into 1000 answer is there but see question 17 b part the child has not mentioned second part which is 250 i hope you have got the point which i want to address over here writing answer is important as per the given question now you see the third one suppose there are 100 african students out of 1000 students what will be the central angles for africans observe this third part answer is c part you will write question 17 c part third part is the answer 36 degrees this calculation if the child is doing in the rough it is okay right so give them a practice of attempting the mcqs how we have to write down the mcqs sometimes we think we have to give them this habit that okay they have got 50% as correct answer 250 as correct answer then 36 degree as correct answer d part as 1 is to 4 correct answer but uh, e part also american that is correct answer but we are not focusing only on the answers we have to tell them the habit of writing the answers that is very very important when they have to go into competition world also so this is a mcq all and one more important thing <clears throat> just observe this question see how the child has written question 17 a part 1 50% the child has got full marks second part 250 third part 36 degree fourth part uh this d part 1 is to 4 now you see good question nidhi i am addressing the that if a child has attempted all five now listen to me carefully if a child has attempted all five please take consider first four whether they are right or wrong i have written this tip also 
if you do all five then first four parts will be marked whether right or wrong if the fifth part is right and third part is wrong you will not get any marks you will get corrected marks on the basis of first four attempts that is the rule which the people use when they are marking even board exams so give them the habit that if it is asked that attempt four to so attempt four whatever you attempt four in the first go that will be considered if you are doing the fifth one whether it is right or wrong it will not help you is it clear so this discussion is very very important that give them a practice there is no need of doing all five that they will get the benefit okay second is wrong a rest four are correct no they will not get marks the examiner will consider first four only coming to next this is the second case study so in the question paper you can correct uh, like you can write two because there it is printed three so this is the second case study very interesting one based on uh, profit loss and discount you can see in this also five uh, parts are there and the child has to attempt uh, four now you see how this child has uh, done now i would like to see some messages in the chat box what should be the right way of writing the answers you can try any of the part like the child has done like this question 18 a part he has done the calculations in a very neat way there is no doubt in it that the concept is not clear to the child it is clear to the child but our focus is on writing how to write in the math paper math exam so writing the question number part and correct choice as answer is important so any one of you can write in the chat box what is the correct way of writing the no need of showing all the steps perfectly fine what is the correct way of writing the answer question 18 a part what is the correct answer if you go back you see which is which is this choice this answer comes out to be 1125 so this is the fourth choice so the child has to write question 18 a part fourth choice rupee 1125 perfectly fine option 4 even uh, that uh, word is not required question 18 a part fourth and then 1125 yes vikas you have mentioned very nicely good so you can see that the children are attempting case study questions they are doing it correctly but the way they are writing the answers is not right so this is the important thing you can convey to the children i hope uh, you will be taking up uh, this case study discussion for the remaining two questions also because we have very less time so coming to the two markers that is part b section 3 okay uh, was that discussion useful regarding the case study questions yes thank you so much so i will be moving on to the section 3 and section 3 is part b of the paper so what the children have to write in the top part b section 3 they can write two markers very interesting question has come as a two marker and you will see that despite doing a lot of practice even in the online classes also children they are not able to understand the significance of two important words i am sharing my experience also because i am teaching one class of class 8 ordered pair when i say ordered pair i cannot simply write 4 comma 5 there is a way of writing an ordered pair similarly a triplet 
if i say a triplet there is a way of writing that so our focus for today is how to write correct mathematics because when you write correct mathematics you get good marks i am getting a good marks is an art so when i say here the question has come that uh, show that the triplet uh, 10 24 and 26 is pythagorean so there are different ways of uh, looking at this because uh, child might use that uh, uh, highest the the highest number here that is 26 is hypotenuse of the right triangle and then uh, the child verifies that uh, square of 26 is equal to square of 10 plus square of 24 if we are able to verify this so these becomes the sides of the right triangle so the triplet is pythagorean but remember that emphasize on these two points how to write an ordered pair because that comes in the case of uh, when we are doing plotting uh, the ordered pairs on the graph paper there also they don't put the brackets some of them they don't put the brackets so we have to emphasize when it is like when we are writing a triplet put the bracket and all the three numbers which are there they are separated by commas similarly when we are writing an ordered pair it is like x comma y then enclosed between small bracket so here the another way of doing the first problem is the child can uh, use the formulation of method of pythagorean triplet so 2m m square plus 1 and m square minus 1 and imagine and then solve if you go to the second part of this when uh, one number is given and then they have to find the triplet the child can use that process again like 2m can be imagined as 24 and then solve m uh, m square plus 1 and m square minus 1 and then get the final answer but here half mark i'm telling you here half mark is for writing the correct answer so if the child is writing the answer i am talking about the choice question find a pythagorean triplet uh, whose the one number is 24 what is the answer you all are getting please write in the chat box one member is 24 and we have to write down the triplet yes uh, answer comes out to be 24 then uh, 143 and 145 and uh, how it is to be written it is to be written in small brackets separate yeah, very nice reader yes monica anju you have right written uh, correctly nidhi if the children they write 145 and 143 they will not get that half mark writing final answer is important and 143 comma 145 in bracket is also not the right way if we have to write the triplet find a pythagorean triplet that means in the final answer it has to be a triplet so the triplet is 24 143 145 separated by commas and enclosed between small brackets okay so this is a very interesting uh, question and here please uh, do practice of this and talk about the terminologies where the children have to acquire the skill of expressing that in a right way like i mentioned two important words over here ordered pair and a triplet coming to the next one question number 22 circumference of the base of the cylinder is given and height is given we have to find the lateral surface area very very interesting question why this is interesting because this question has been asked for two marks the beauty is how the child is attempting a two marker this solution which you can see on the screen here the child has used the uh, formula the lateral surface area is circumference of the base into height and then yes product is to be found then answer is available okay now you see this one which which solution do you find is uh, better here the child has used this this is also a correct answer 
there can be i am not talking about that these two ways are wrong or i'm not uh, you know uh, comparing in terms of the correctness but i am emphasizing on saving time point like it's a two marker we can directly go by this way lsa is circumference of base into height give them a practice when these two things are given you have to just find the product now you see here here the child has first determined the radius and then again put it into the formula for lsa that is 2 pi rh and did this calculation yes that is a time saver technique coming to question number 23 here also very interesting question has been chosen if x plus y is equal to 3 x square plus y square is 5 then uh, find the value of uh, x into y <laughs> see there are different ways of uh, solving this some of the children they started with this expression that is x uh, this equation x plus y is equal to 3 now x plus y is equal to 3 squaring both the sides you use the identity a plus b whole square you can reach to the final answer by using the value of x square plus y square which is given as 5 and the final answer comes out to be xy is equal to 2 what is another way of uh, doing this some children they have used this method you see this method x plus they have started with x plus y whole square interesting they started with x plus y whole square use the identity x square plus y square plus 2xy and then substituted the value of x plus y which is given that is 3 and x square plus y square that is 5 and after calculation they got the answer as xy is equal to 2 now i am taking your attention to a very interesting thing which a child has written and i have deliberately written over here discuss now my question to all of you is will you be giving marks for this just write yes or no this child has taken assumed actually the value of x as 2 and y as 1 and x square plus y square the x and y same x and y the child has taken and reached to the conclusion that x into y is 2 will you be given 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 the marks in this do you think it, it is the right approach right process please discuss these things with children also because in their mind they are thinking that this is right way that the value of x and y is satisfied for both so that is the solution that is a particular value okay so here they have to be talked about this particular thing yeah it is trial and error but uh, the process is not correct i told you that in mathematics if a person is having the knowledge of the subject the person is clear about number one vocabulary number two the process and number three the application part so here the process part is weak the process is not clear coming to question number 24 here this is a very simple one solving the equation given equation uh, mathematically yes that was not correct so we will not be giving marks rather have one to one interaction with that child and convince that what is the wrong thing in that particular thing so so here cross multiplication method is being used and then the child has got the answer so i'm not going to discuss over this but the important thing is because it is a two marker each and every step has a value point similarly the second part also now coming to this one this is a very uh, important thing because again i i am coming to a question uh, from geometry so here it says two adjacent angles of a parallelogram they are in the ratio 1 is to 5 find all the angles of a parallelogram now in this question 
if we are already given adjacent angles of a parallelogram so if a child is using the concept that some of the adjacent angles of a parallelogram is 180 degrees then also we are going to give the credit like 5x plus x is equal to 180 degrees when you solve you get the answer and all the remaining angles can be found using different properties of the parallelogram but here in this particular uh, question answer uh, which is displayed on the screen see the child has assumed yes the child has to draw the figure here the child has drawn the figure with a pen please discourage that draw the figure using the ruler label it and it's not constructed so measurement is not important so here the important important thing is that it is appearing like a parallelogram pencil and ruler perfectly fine so here i had a word with the child like the child is assuming angle 1 angle 2 angle 3 and uh, writing the reasons and all but where is this angle 1 angle 2 angle 3 here the child has written it is x and angle 2 is 5x so that means the child has understanding but we have to tell how to write in the final examination It's to save time so coming to the next question number 26 <clears throat> i have again come to the ordered pair thing plotting of the points children they plot points you know that children they plot points but they do not name it and they draw the figure and they write that uh, quadrilateral formed is a square if they are not writing the ordered pairs which they have plotted okay your question is uh, putting the implies sign implies sign comes when we are solving an equation and equal to signs ca comes when we are solving an expression okay so you put the implies sign when we are solving a uh, some equation like i think i have mentioned that uh, no it is not necessary again i have told you that uh, it's the way of writing if a teacher is emphasizing on the writing part in a classroom in a math classroom specifically that means it's good writing in a neat way where to put put implies sign is is a very good quality of a uh, teacher as well as the student okay coming to this question where the child has plotted the point see this is a very nicely done uh, graph here i would like to take your attention to how to label x axis and the y axis here only the first quadrant uh, has been taken because in dav board textbooks also the plotting of points is done in the first quadrant no no problem so ox and oy are taken as the x axis and the y axis uh, respectively and positive directions are taken over there so here you notice that where x has been written just observe this and on top of this x you will find a dot on the line that is correct representation some of the children they just write small x negative axis is not required because uh, in uh, if you see the dav board textbooks they have uh, given information about knowledge of the first quadrant but if the children are uh, have gained the knowledge of the remaining quadrants and they are plotting that they are making the complete x axis and the y axis they can do marks will not be deducted on that now here you see that in this particular question how the x axis and the y axis are labeled when it comes to plotting of ordered pairs the scale is not required why because already when we mark the points on the x axis and the y axis we take equal gaps so here you notice that on the x axis we have numbered 0 1 2 3 4 so on similarly on the y axis 0 1 2 3 4 so on on equal gaps so here 
when it comes to plotting of ordered pairs no scale is required scale is required when you are plotting two different quantities and you are taking on the x axis a particular representation maybe two uh, the, these uh, big divisions as number of days or two big divisions as some particular quantity which is given in the question i have one question here in this paper also i will come to that point as well so good point noted so here in these kinds of uh, questions scale is not required so here the quadrilateral is a square now coming to part b section 4 which is a three marker question now i am uh, you know uh, we will be more emphasizing on the value points please uh, talk to children that in section 4 and section 5 write each and every small or big thing which you know about that particular question as what is given what is required how you have solved it the complete process with reasoning with formulas everything S say this is a simple question question number 27 Uh, find the value of x and uh, one expression is one uh, equation is given over there so here uh, this is uh, on the knowledge of exponents chapter ex exponents and there you see that one reasoning is important that when bases are uh, same we equate powers and for every single step half marker is there i will share with you the marking of this particular question so here you notice that this sentence is very very important that when bases are same we equate power this reasoning is important when the children are solving similarly here also uh, when it comes to uh, using the algebraic identities tell the, the children to write the reason like we are using uh, squaring both sides so they are writing we have squared both the sides of this expression and then uh, uh using the algebraic identity a minus b whole square and then tell them to write down the final answer here in the first part if you see it's asked that find the value of x square plus 1 by x square in the end they have to write answer therefore x square plus 1 by x square is 9 plus 2 which is 11 same rule goes for any of the question which is there in uh, a three marker like i told you earlier also this is a question from uh, mensuration whatever formulas children are using they have to write down the formulas and do the calculations so calculation is important steps are important final answer is important three important things so first write down what is given then which formula you are using do the calculation part and write down the final answer same goes with the a three marker from this is a question from uh, chapter squares and square roots here also you will see that every step is important and final answer that uh, we have to find the square root of the perfect square that is a four uh, greatest four digit uh, number which is a perfect square so children they write the answer up to 9801 and they don't do this uh, calculation that square root of 9801 is 99 so this carries a one mark weightage so give them practice of finding the square root in the end and writing the final answer and if some children are directly writing on the basis of observation but they have written this uh, uh, answer that square root of 9801 is 99 that is perfectly fine now coming to next uh this i told you earlier also that when it comes to a question in which uh, concept of direct and inverse variation is used please tell them to make the table write like which uh, variation case they are using and then apply the uh, property and then write the final answer so each and everything has a value point so here you can see that in this question the table is mentioned and then uh, values are written reasoning is also there and then calculation part is done and final answer is also mentioned so full credit will be given again in a geometry question you see a rough figure has been drawn 
given is written to find is written and solution with reasoning is written so the child is uh, getting the marks now i am taking your attention to one observation here like whenever a child is getting equation like ab square is 25 and you will see that uh, many of the children they write ab is equal to 5 that is square root of 25 which is 5 please tell them to write the reason over there that side cannot be negative otherwise they will get this information in their mind that uh, uh, there is only one value which is there but when we solve ab square is equal to 25 so ab comes out to be plus minus 5 right why we are not taking negative because the side cannot be negative so this is a very important observation for this particular question you can see question number 32 which is there in the paper now i have come to that question uh, we were having a discussion on uh, scale right when to mention scale and how to write it so this is a good question where the children are asked to draw a speed time graph for the data which is provided so you are given time in hours and speed in kilometer per hours and uh, we have to plot it now you see first thing is drawing of the axis second marking the correct axis you know how to mark it point o is important x is important on the positive direction of the x axis point y is important on the positive direction of the y axis then labeling labeling meaning of the quantities which are given over there and how you are labeling them write down the scale according to that now you notice that in this particular question how the child has labeled on the x axis one bigger division the child is taking taking it as 2 hours right and interestingly you will see that here the child has put kink on the x axis because if you see 0 to 4 and then 4 to 6 so 0 to 4 comes out to be 4 hours and then 4 to 6 is 2 hours so there is a gap the, the two are not matching so the child has put the kink it is so relevant so tips for the graph question is they have to draw the correct axis mark them write the quantities on the axis and then check if the kink is to be marked write the scale correctly label the quantities also on the x axis and the y axis and write all the ordered pairs which is important yes this uh, you have uh, mentioned a very nice point i am reading the chats that is quite relevant to this coming to the last part and the last part is three big 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 questions so these are the huge questions and you know by this point that uh, a five marker meaning writing each and everything and each and everything should be done in a proper manner of obviously this will be a question which involves a little bit of more calculation and uh, there will be a question in which construction thing is to be done now you see that uh, question number 34 uh, there is a choice between two questions and they are from the same chapters and in both these questions there is a lot of calculations so here i am just taking your attention to uh, this particular question where you will see that how beautifully each and everything has been mentioned by the child i am taking uh, this uh, second part the difference between si and ci on a certain uh, sum of money for 2 years at 4% uh, per annum is rupee 20 find the sum so difference between ci and, and si that means it will come in the given part okay it is 20 so can you tell me what the child has missed over there rupee 20 that means here you have to mention the unit rupee 20 very nice mr sk then uh, uh, then rate of interest 4% per annum beautifully mentioned 
yes marks will be deducted if the scale is not mentioned for scale there there, there is a weightage of marks 4% per annum some children they do not have the habit of writing p dot a that is per annum tell them it has a meaning that is why we are writing it then time two years then uh, principal see in this question i tell you one thing uh, it's a pure observation some of the children they are very comfortable when they take uh, principal as rupee 100 and they do big 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 calculations and some of the children they take principal as p only so both the ways are correct do not uh, discourage the children let them think on their own and write the process so that they get confidence that instilling confidence is very very important so first formula is important so the child has written the formula calculated uh, simple interest calculated uh, compound interest then uh, difference between c and uh, si after this applying the unitary method and getting the final answer see how beautifully each and every step has been mentioned similarly question number uh, 35 if you see this is a very interesting uh, question and uh, here uh, this is a distribution of the property and uh, that is also in rupees many of the children they have not mentioned the unit when i have uh, done the checking you see i have marked there also let the total value of the property is rupee x they have to you know mark here it is in rupees it's x it is fine but uh, unit is important so tell them to write it properly so tip is for this particular question total value when they are writing as final answer it's a five marker that's why i'm telling you this total value in rupees in the end is important write what is given write the statements and the final answer which you have got now coming to the last question and very very close to my heart because i really love you know doing constructions so here in this uh, question uh, a child said that ma'am uh, i have used a protector and uh, construct uh, drawn this angle 105 degrees and 75 degrees the child will not get the credit for this they have to first understand the difference between draw and construct when it is written construct so they have to use a, a compass for uh, constructing angles which are in the multiples of uh, 15 okay degrees and rough figure if the children are drawing no problem they can draw the rough figure like you see here the child has imagined what is given and on the basis of that they get the insight because in eighth class we are not encouraging them to write the steps of construction so that is why they just observe the figure which they have drawn and then they do the construction here specifically in this question because this is the closing question for today specifically give them a habit that arcs should be clearly visible and then put the arrows when we are constructing angles arrows on the rays are important arrows on both the sides of a line are important so when we are doing construction then uh, these rays and lines play a significant role and then writing the final answer so what is this write given write what is to be constructed if you wish to draw the rough figure it's your choice do the construction and write the final answer that's the beautiful part so my presentation is over thank you so much and uh, if you have uh, any of the questions you can write in the chat box because hey, uh, uh, rashmi they have written their queries in the chat box uh, uh, should i take it one by one because there are so many or do we write the answer of these yes i will be making faqs for them and then okay. we will be sharing with them so if you right. have done the attendance thing right uh -huh. so uh -huh. we will be sharing the presentation and question paper marking scheme everything 
okay and all the queries and most of these queries you have already taken but a few of them uh, somebody has uh, written twice and thrice about the question uh, of um, uh, just because dogra has written please tell if child has done speed time distance question of direct and inverse variation with formula and not with the table yeah no and problem in that we give credit to that we give full awards to them yeah. process if the process is correct it is fine but sometimes uh, mr vikas if it is written that using this particular concept you have to solve then in that case the child should get that but like you must be facing this uh, observation when the, we say draw the graph so if when we say draw the graph they don't draw the line graph but by looking at the data they first try to draw the bar graph isn't it and i think in one of the question paper also uh, many of the children they did it in grade 8 right so if the process is correct if the answer is correct we can give credit to the children mathematically it should be right that is the basic thing thank you so much everyone uh, for uh, sparing your time i hope uh, uh, this will help all of us indeed for helping our children and uh, do share with your friends also the things which we have learned today together thank you so much thank you rashmi ma'am yeah, for uh, thank you rashmi and uh, my dear friends it's a request to all of you to kindly share uh this ppt which we are going to share with you and take webinar with the middle school teachers and discuss all the value point which uh, rashmi has discussed with you and in turn ask them to share this with the students you see ultimately beneficiaries of this whole exercise is the students uh besides uh, i request all of you to share your practice question paper with us so that uh, teachers are able to share those with the students to give them maximum uh, practice for upcoming examinations and uh, so on now this is a time to leave on behalf of all my friends who have joined us uh, i express my deep gratitude to rashmi for her valuable and practical input and which are the need of the hour right uh, friends uh, i would like to make an announcement also since we have come to know that certain features of google which are very helpful to teaching learning of mathematics by the online and also uh, when we start taking face to face teaching uh, how to use these features very effectively uh, we will be taking webinars on that uh, before that we'll do some exercise we'll share one performer with you and take you uh, will take your take on this particular uh, webinar and then we'll start on that we'll take uh, one hour each week uh, with you to discuss the whole thing and that will be um, that is going to benefit you while teaching mathematics in the real classroom also and uh, thank you very much in case you have any query you write it in the uh, group also and uh, uh, further your queries on the chat book i have noted it down all and in the form of question answers uh, faqs will uh, give all answers of all the queries in a day or two thank you very much rashmi thank you dear thank you very much for working so hard and uh, i hope they are benefited by this uh, the whole exercise i am getting their feedback also and uh, it's very motivating thank thank you rashni ma'am for the opportunity and it's always uh, uh, you know uh, good to interact with teachers this time we are very very sorry that uh, we have muted you all but we will yes. definitely be having a session where we will be having a conversation conversation that is missing but uh, keeping in mind the time uh, schedule we had to do that uh, okay thank you very much i should we leave now